You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business, the podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This podcast is being brought to you by my inspiring new book titled Courage is a Muscle, Using Heart to Power Your Entrepreneurial Dreams. You can grab your copy today on Amazon. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks so much for tuning in and checking out another wonderful episode of SOB, Style of Business, the podcast. This is your host, Keetra, and today I have a real treat for y'all, one of my uh, good friends, and I'm just excited to be talking to him and catching up with him. So let's just get get right to it, cut into it. We're going to keep it moving. Today, I'm chatting with my Good friend, Timothy Williams and Timothy, Tim, I like to call him Tim, but, you know, we're going to do Timothy just to, you know, keep it straight. <laughs> he's a um, he's an artist, a uh, talented songwriter. You know, he's been in the entertainment industry for a while. And uh, I just love his spirit and what he's trying to do to help his community and give back to those people who are important to him. And, um, you know, just a good guy. He's also a script writer. And today we're going to be talking about his upcoming short film project that he's working on putting some things together uh, and really advocating for those victims who, those victims of domestic violence and, you know, just trying to bring awareness and doing some good things in that regard. And the project that he's currently working on, Can You Get Away? Uh, it's just a whole campaign that he's he's working on to to develop. And like I said, to bring awareness to the cause and, you know, just doing some good things. So let me stop rambling. Timothy, go ahead and drop that introduction. Give us a little introduction of who you are for those who are not familiar, and we are going to jump right into the interview. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? I, uh, my name is Timothy Williams. Uh, most people know me by Capone, Capone Williams, or Mr. YBR, Young Billy Ross. There you uh, go. Artist, songwriter. <laughs> uh, originally from uh, East Texas area, Longview, Texas. Now I'm residing in the DFW area. Uh, I have a song out called Can You Get Away? A story about well, a story of domestic violence, and uh, you know, it was a story that that happened around 2005. A friend of mine, she was killed by her son's father, and so I wrote the song. And I sat on it for a while, and <clears throat> you know, more and more people I knew, you know, they were becoming victims of it. So I re-recorded it, put some new music to it, released it. I started a hashtag Can You Get Away campaign, bring awareness and attention to the issue of domestic violence. So that's where we are right now. I wrote a short film based on around the song that I'm raising money. Hopefully we can try to get that done here by the end of the year. I appreciate you, you know, being so open and sharing with us, you know, how close to home this was for you. Cause I feel like a lot of people have experienced domestic, domestic violence, either directly or indirectly. And it's one of those subjects that, you know, you almost kind of, you know, that it's important and you want to talk to people about it so you can kind of get help, but it's also a little bit taboo at the same time. And then, you know, it's just it's to me it's a touchy feely subject that is really delicate, and when it hits cl- when it hits close to home like that, you know, that kind of changes everything. So, um, you want to kind of take us through, like you know, the leading up to you know how things got to where they were, and then you kind of getting into the campaign. Like, was there any signs or anything that was brought to your attention to where you felt like you could have done something, or maybe not? I don't even know if that's the right question to ask, but give us a little background as to why you want to um, make sure that there's uh, a whole campaign around this. Yeah, well, you know, we we were, um, like I said, we were, we were really cool, but it, it wasn't a situation where we, you know, talk or spoke or saw each other all the time. So around this time, it had been, you know, probably about three or four years before I had even, before the last time I had seen her and a friend of hers called me and told me about it. And, you know, at that particular time, it just kind of gets you to thinking because, you know, you grow up, you see different things, you know, and you see something here and you're like, oh, well, you know, that's really nothing. You see something here and you're like, mm, well, you know, that's typical. But it's like, I think people need to learn to distinguish, you know, you have domestic violence, you have domestic abuse. You know, domestic violence is really something that people really kind of center towards people that's in a relationship. Yeah. Domestic abuse can be, you know, anybody, you know, domestic abuse can be kids, grandparents, you know, men, women. So, you know, it's both, you know, people just, when they hear domestic violence, you know, they just automatically think, oh, man, you know, something is happening to a woman. And most of the time yeah, it is. Yeah. But, you know, men can go through, you know, kids can go through domestic abuse, parents, grandparents. You know, it's really it's mental and it's physical. 
So uh, when I got the news, like I said, I immediately wrote the song. I was just like, eh, you know, I'm just going to sit on it. Yeah. And like I said, over the next, you know, the next couple of years, you know, people I went to school with, you know, people around the neighborhood, it was just happening to them. And I'm like, well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, all it takes is one, you know, mm-hmm. if one person can start a fire, you know, it can burn forever. So I was like, well, if I say something, maybe I can pull some more people into it. You know, let me re-record this song. I got one more man. You remember Peanut K.I. Yeah, oh producer, yeah. So, Love Peanut. Um, yep. He put together a track for me. And I went over there and recorded it, and I'm like, okay. So I went ahead and dropped it, you know, started the whole hashtag King Getaway campaign. Actually, last year during the pandemic, um, I started what's called Her Story, which is okay, a series yes, that I'm okay. doing on my YouTube channel. And basically, I'm just trying to get victims slash survivors, uh, whether it's domestic violence, domestic abuse to come, you know, sit down, I record them, you know, let them tell their story. And it, it's really not too long. It's four questions I have, you know, they answer it. And, you know, I'll go ahead and I'm going to start putting it on my YouTube channel. I want to do uh, at least 10 for October, which is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So yeah. that's really where we hit it. You know, I, I want to get that started. Definitely want to get everything set up for the movie. So, you know, hopefully we'll have that rock and roll in here by then. Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah, I, I feel like you are already kind of headed toward that direction and having that goal accomplished. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I spoke, uh, I spoke with one lady and, you know, she... She, you know, goes around, you know, speaking to different people, you know, just trying to lend a hand what she can. And and she used a term I had never heard before. And Mm -hmm. she said that uh, one woman described it to her as a mental relationship warfare. Oh, wow. And I thought that was interesting because it's like, you know, the physical wounds, you can see them. Right. But, you know, they'll eventually heal. But the mental scars, you can't see. And it, it really can be something as little as, you know, I've been around people and I've heard, you know, uh, a dude tell a chick, well, you know, shut up. You know, you're ugly. Nobody wants you but me. Like, yeah. people think that doesn't mean anything, but that's planting the seed in their head that, okay, well, what if he's telling the truth? You know, maybe I can't go anywhere. Maybe I can't get anybody else, so I just have to stay here and take this. Yeah. So it's definitely, I would probably say, from the people I've talked to, 80 85% mental. And the, and the physical part comes along as well. But right. I think it's more mental abuse than anything else because it's just constant degrading, you know, constant saying this and you're this and you're that. Nobody wants you but me. And it's, it's just, it gets to a point where they actually start believing it. And the crazy thing is, you know, as hard as it is for women to come out and speak about it, you know, I've spoken to some dudes and they're like, I'll never, ever tell anybody about that because they think it takes something away from them. It takes something from their manhood if they'll come mm-hmm. out and say, hey, you know, I was, you know, I was abused by this, by this woman. And you know, people going to look at them crazy like, what? Like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. Like, she didn't do that to you. And so that's the first thing that happens. And you know, I've spoken to little kids and, you know, with parents who kids treated them a certain way. So, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, it's, it's an interesting cycle of how it goes, you know, and most of the people that experience it probably seen it as, not everyone, but, you know, they saw it as, you know, when they were kids, you know, maybe someone older, their parents, so they saw someone doing it. And when you see that as a child, you know, that kind of gets in your head where, okay, well, that's, you know, that's how I should that's treat normal, this person. Yeah. That's how that person should treat me. So, yeah, it's just an ugly cycle. And, you know, I think the more we speak about it, the more we get awareness out about it it could definitely do some good of course you know you can't change the world overnight but you know you can do what you can while you're here yeah it's a start yeah it's definitely a start and with the talent that you have like you know even the film and the single and just kind of putting your whole entertainment expertise behind it is I I feel like that's going to go a long way and especially like you know interesting interestingly enough you're definitely like the men I, I feel like it's all equal, right? You know, whether you, if you're being abused mentally, physically, whether you're a man or woman, it's all equal across the board. Like nobody is, it's not greater for, you know, any, basically everybody's experiencing it, right? Man or woman. Uh, But then like, like for men, I wonder like what, what sort of, um, you know what I mean? Like, I I feel like they should be able to also speak up, but just because like, you're supposed to be tough and not cry and all this, you know, all of the the things that they're taught when they're kids, especially like the older uh, generation of gentlemen and things like that, that were taught a certain thing and, you know, turn the other cheek and, you know, she pounding on your chest or screaming at you and all in your face. 
like I, I don't I don't care who it is. I know that that takes a lot because mentally you have somebody in your face and kind of pushing your buttons. But when you're taught a certain things, I, I know it takes a lot to kind of restrain from that. Right, and like right, you know what I mean. Like so right. so what are you? I guess. I guess the question for this would be like, what are some of the things that like, why do you feel like they can't have some sort of conversation about it? Like maybe it's not even like a a relative or somebody they can talk to. Like what sort of um, outlet do you think that men, what sort of outlet do you think men have available to reach out to, to to get some sort of resource? Because like you said, they are embarrassed and they do feel like maybe talking about it would make them less than, um, Right, right, right. I mean, it, you know, it's it's the same resources. It's just that we don't push it toward the male side. You know, anytime you hear it, it's always, you know, it's always just geared toward the women. I mean, the same resources are there. It's just that, you know, they they might think people to think of them a certain way or they might call in. And uh, I talked to one dude, you know, and he, he said that he tried to go and, you know, just find someone to talk to. And he was laughed at because they were like, oh, come wow. on, man, you're a dude. Like, you know, yeah. like, get over it, you know. And so it's it's pretty much how a lot of dudes are, you know, how we grew up. Like, you know, hey, don't cry, you know, shut up, quit whining. And it's not really even that. It's just like you get it in your head when you're little. So it's like some dudes, it's not really, in my opinion, it's not really even a violence or domestic violence issue. It's a, okay, she's in my face. I know I can hurt her if I strike back, so I'm just going to take it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I found a lot of it is. It's like... A friend of mine, you know, she she had a boyfriend in the nose. Like she was just really provoking him. So I get there, you know, his nose is bleeding, and I'm I'm just kind of like, man, what's going on? He was like, hey man, you need you know you need to get her before I hurt. I'm like, just leave. Like, yeah. you know those those situations that happen. It's like they don't want to leave, but at the same time they don't want to hurt him. So they'll take that physical abuse. I, and I think with him, it's more physical abuse than it is uh, the mental aspect. Because I think most most not all, but most men are tough enough to be like, all right, you know, whatever, you know, you'll say this, okay, you know, whatever, I'm out, I'm fixing to go hang out with my people, I'll be back later. So yeah. um, I just think the the resources are there, but at the same time, you know, it's just something in us. It's something, you know, if you were raised a certain way that you're just not going to speak out about it. You know, you're just going to, you know, suck it up, take it for what it is and keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for explaining that and really getting a little bit deeper into that, because that's that's pretty much what I was getting at is like as far as, you know, are there not resources like as many resources for men as there are for women? And basically what you're saying is like the resource, the resources are there. It's just a whole different vibe when it comes to, you know, a man reaching out. And um, also, uh, just like you were pointing out, like it's it's more uh, it, it it's different because it's the way that you know, they were raised or, you know, maybe a certain culture or environment just taught them to, to, to deal with things in a certain way, which, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. you know, that, yeah, that's a lot of mental. Just, yeah. Just suck it up and, you know, be a man, you know, like, you know, you, you, and again, everybody doesn't come up the same way, but, you know, um, you know, you, you just come up a certain way and you just have to deal with it, you know, and again, you know, who raised you, you know, like you might've been raised, you know, by two parents. You might have been raised by one parent. And you might not have, you know, you might have got more of this thing and not enough of the other thing that you needed to create that balance. Yeah. You know, if you don't have that balance, then you're kind of off kilter. So, you know, if you got too much of this, you know, you're going to be like, you're going to see things one way. If you got too much of that, you're going to see it another way. So I think without that balance also in men and women, you know, if you don't have that balance, then that can kind of cheat you in one direction and, you'll probably put up with more stuff than you actually should. And, you know, I think that just comes from that lack of balance. Lack of balance. Yeah, no, definitely. And I feel like, you know, sometimes too, a lot of these relationships, like before you even get to the domestic violence or the domestic abuse, whether it be mental or physical, you know, a lot of it is toxic before, you know, there's, there's signs that are leading up to it. And, you know, we all know, uh, and, and, you know, have, heard and experienced, you know, whether it be family members or other relatives or whoever it might be. We know of people who um, stay in these relationships for the sake of kids or finances. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot of stuff that kind of goes into it. But like, as far as the campaign that you're putting together, like, are there any, like, are you guys offering any like educational resources or things like that to kind of help people 
um, those people who are in domestic violence relationships and maybe they do want to get away and they do want to um, find help. Like, are you guys putting together any types of resources or is there sort of uh, any services that you're offering to help those those uh, victims or where are you with that? Have yeah, you got well, that far yet? Yeah, well, actually, no. I, well, it's just me. Like, uh, you know, pretty much every, you know I me, mean? like pretty much everything I do, pretty much doing it on my own. So, yeah. you know, through through my, whether it's my her story on uh, YouTube, you know, whether it's any of my social media, definitely when people reach out to me, you know, I know what direction to point them in. You know, I work with a couple of different organizations, whether, you know, that they need someone to stay. And I think the main issue are, are people that have small children, yeah. you know, and uh, I spoke, actually, I'm going to get ready to do a, a interview here in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, the, the system in itself, from what I've heard, um, I don't want to say it's broken, but the system in itself it's not trying to really fix the problem. You know, it's like, hey, you're having a problem, you know, come here for a night or two, everything should be okay, go back home. You know, it's not, right, yeah. they're not getting to the root of the problem. They're not actually providing assistance for them to get away. You know, it's just like you're putting a, a Band-Aid on a broken bone, it's not going to mm. be. And that's pretty much what I come across. But I, like I said, I definitely... um can get them in touch with the people that they need. You know, we have uh, regional, well, we have local, regional, and nationwide assistance. You know, for people, I had a few people uh, DM me on Instagram after I had put a clip of her story, my first her story on there. And, you know, we got them to the proper people, got them the numbers and the connections that they needed uh, to talk to, to, you know, get them out of the particular situation that they were in. Wow. That's amazing, Tim. And also, um, if I can interject, uh, oh, my yeah. single... Can you get away uh, half of the proceeds? So every time you know it's downloaded or stream it, I'm giving half of the proceeds to organizations that actually you know go out and that are physically you know doing the grassroots that are going out trying to spread the word and you know and help people in different situations. So I donate half of everything that I get from that to those organizations or to people that I know that are out doing that. Wow! Yeah, no, that's that's you're you're definitely a blessing with that because you know resources are always needed. And um, we talked about, okay, so we just talked about the, you know, resources, but I want to get a little bit deeper into like some of the signs because, you know, just like you, we were talking about earlier and you were saying that like for men, they don't really talk about it because it's not, it's not cool. You know, you don't be, you ain't going to be talking about how your wife or your girlfriend, whoever, you know, beat you up or curse, cursed you out or, you know, just whatever. Well, it's just not something that, we, you know, just tolerated. Um, but then whether it be a man or a woman. Like, what are some of the telltale signs that are common when it comes to, like, domestic violence? And, uh, the, oh, my goodness, what's wrong with me? I'm just twisting these words all the way up. Domestic violence. And then also I want to um, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on domestic abuse as well because I know you mentioned that. So let's let's start there first. Like, what are some of the telltale signs that people can look for if they suspect that a, a loved one or somebody that they know is in need of uh, assistance? You know, from from what I've uh, you know seen and experienced, and, and just talked to different people, um, I think I think probably the number one thing. Uh, well, I don't want to say number one, but one of the things that I hear a lot are just kind of like drastic changes, you know, in behavior, uh, whether it's attitude, you know, whether it's you know where you would talk to someone, you know, daily, every other day, you know, now it's every you know three or four days, now it's every week. Yeah. Now it's every month. Like uh, from the people that I've spoken to, different professionals and people that have gone through it, that's definitely a sign. Of, you know, mood swings and people that previously that you probably didn't see them in. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the one thing that I like to that I tell people just on a personal level, like when I when I deal with situations or when I uh, deal with people, like red flags are there. Yeah. You know, people can say, "Oh yeah, you know this happened." I didn't see it coming. And I'm like, listen, things are there. You know, they they can they can be whoever they want at the beginning, but they're gonna slip up. You're gonna see something and yeah. then you're gonna have to make the choice. Okay, do I, I see that? Am I gonna act like I didn't see it? <laughs> exactly. And keep going? Yeah, yeah. Or do I need to address that? So things are there. Like it's gonna happen at the beginning. Now whether you choose to continue or not, then that's gonna be up to you. But you know, if you see, you know, fits of rage, you know, uh, a behavior before you get with somebody that you know, mm, that's a little, 
Well, that's not normal. Happen, that's a little yeah. different. You know, you might want to, you know, you might want to keep that in the back of your head. You know, that might want to be a conversation you want to have. But, you know, some people just, you know, these are tough conversations you have to have with people. And some people just, you know, they don't want to do it. They just rather kind of sit back and be like, oh, well, you know what? Oh, that's, that just happened at once. You know, it won't. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was drunk or, you know, she was tripping. You know, there's always an excuse you can give if you don't want to deal with an issue. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, also just as importantly, you talked about how, uh, domestic abuse can occur to, um, you know, grandparents and other relatives and things like that. And another thing that I, I, I heard a story a couple of weeks ago, um, I think it had to do with like a, um, an elderly woman and I believe her her daughter was taking care of her. But anyway, it was like, just, just, just ridiculous. You're talking about abuse, you know, I, I, I can't even get into somebody treating a parent that way. But, you know, I, I don't know, like, you know, people have their own situations that they go through and that they deal with. But the type of abuse that was happening and, you know, I, I don't know, like the full story of how it, everything was found out. But, you know, she was supposed to be cared for by her daughter. Apparently it didn't happen. Um, she wasn't taking care of her. What's, she wasn't feeding her. And, um you know, wasn't like uh, just giving her her meds and just all this other type of stuff that that is abusive. So, like, can you you want to yeah. get into that a bit as well, just to kind of let the audience know that this is also something that is um, a little bit more common than what we would suspect. I mean, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, it's just like, you know, I mean, they call it child abuse. You know, that's pretty much domestic abuse when it comes to children, you know, uh, parents, grandparents, you know, who you know, are up in age, can no, you know, no longer take care of themselves. You know, it's, to me, it's more of, I've, I've found so many different variables. Like, you know, it's kind of like the old saying, it ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun. So you have people who felt like they were, they were treated a certain way when they were younger. And now they have the upper hand and it's kind of like, well, now you have to depend on me. Right. <clears throat> and those are some of the issues that I've seen, like, especially with domestic, uh, abuse against, you know, parents, grandparents. It's like, oh, um, man, you know, well, you, you treated me bad when I was little. So, you know, whatever, you know, I'll take care of you when I have time. You know, I'll get this for you when I have time like you did to me. Wow. And you just have some cases where people are just, you know, they just feel like they don't have time. Like, I don't want to put my life on hold to try to take care of you. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, people have agendas, you know, and when you have an agenda, then, you know, that can get in the way of probably what you should be doing. So it's like, do I really want to put my life on hold to take care of this person? And even if you have good intentions, you know, sometimes just be like, oh man, you know, I know I should be doing this, but I don't. And, and that can affect that person. Right. But you don't really right. think about it that way. Like you said, you know, I will. I've heard people say, oh, you know, they, you know, they ate earlier. They don't need to eat right now. I'll go buy that later. Like, yeah. you know, that's not really a decision you can make. You know, you can't say, what a person needs. So, um, I mean, it, it, it's, it goes all across the spectrum, you know, children, whether it's neglect, you know, whether it's physical abuse, you know, whether it's, and, and some of the abuse, I don't really like to call it abuse because some of it is, you know, what your situation is, you know, some of it stems from just not having it to do it. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's all around the spectrum. Some, you know, it's calculated and some is, they they consider it that because, you know, I have these kids, I can't take care of them. You know, my parents need me, I can't afford to take care of them. So they don't look at it that way. They just kind of try to bunch all of that up into one category as some type of, you know, domestic or child abuse. And it just really depends on the situation. And it, that's, that's the sad thing about it. It's like, you just don't really know. You know, I, I remember hearing a commercial on the radio where they say, you know, what does a person that's hungry look like? Mm. You know, what What does a person that's, you know, being abused look like if it's not physical and you just don't know? You know, if they yeah. if you don't ask the right questions or if they don't decide to open up to you, you know, you really just don't know. You know, it's hard to, you know, look at a kid and be like, because that kid, you know, they've probably been threatened. Like, yeah, you better not say nothing. So, you know, yeah. they might not eat in a couple of days, but you can't look at them in some cases and be like, Mm, well, that kid looks hungry. And in some cases, you can't. Yeah. But are you going to do something about it? You know. So. 
Wow, that's the important question. Like, what, what, what are you gonna do about it? And um, you know, I, I definitely agree with you because you know sometimes we, like, with me, I know especially like I, I, I'm one of those people that I like to to help where I can, but at the same time, you know how they tell you, you know, you gotta mind your business, stay in your lane. Right, you right. know, so yeah, absolutely. you know, absolutely. so, um, and I say that respectfully because you know it's it can give it can be rough. You know, you you love people and you want to help and you want to be um, there for them, but at the same time, you want to be respectful and mindful of their willingness to to open up. Or, you know, you just don't want to be out of line with people. Um, is what right. I'll say. So, well, not only that, but you know, you, you have to take into the to the situation of. A friend of mine, you know, his 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 cousin went through that. You know, she called him, hey, you know, he's over here. You know, he's putting his hands on me. So he, me, him, a couple of fellas, you know, we went over there and, you know, handled the situation, got her, got all the stuff, got up out of there, and the next week she was right back over there. Wow. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, that's another problem. It's like, it's a kind of story. you know, you put yourself on the line to try to help, but they keep going back. So now what do you do? Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, I say those that have the ability have the responsibility. So, you know, it's just really up to you if you want to do something about it or not at the end of the day, to be honest. Wow. I love that. Love that, Tim. All right. Well, um, this is going to be an amazing campaign. I, I can't wait to see everything that you have planned coming up for next month. Um, can you get away to campaign, you guys? I'm going to let um, – you know what? Before we get ready to wrap um, – Give us some words of encouragement. I know you just you just dropped a little phrase right there that was really I'm gonna write that down when I go back and listen. Um, but give us a couple of words of encouragement. And I, you know, for anybody that's kind of going through a rough time or or in a situation to where this is a part of their their life, like what what words could you offer to them uh, right now? Oh man, um, you know, man, and, and this year especially, you know, coming off of. 20, you know, the beginning of COVID, 21, still really dealing with it. I just think uh, now, I, I think I think one thing COVID did for people, I think it made them, you know, kind of reconsider some of their social contracts. Mm. You know, do I like this person I'm with? You know, do I like where I'm living? You know, do I really want to stay at home and teach these kids? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so just a top everything one. was, you know, yeah, everything was just bad. So the, the way I look at it, it's like, Sometimes you just kind of have to sit back and just say, who am I? Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. And to some, it does. And I understand that. But at the end of the day, you know, you just have to kind of sit back and be like, you know, who am I? Like, yeah. what am I here for? You know, is this thing right here that's making me mad? Is it really that serious? You know, did I really have to, you know, do this in this particular situation? And, and COVID is doing something that, that was being done before I think, you know, COVID and the politics that are going on is really dividing people more right. and more and more and more. And it's like, to me, it's not, <clears throat> it's not the COVID that's causing problems. This is how we're treating each other that's causing problems. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, when I sit back and look at it, I just kind of, you know, just kind of sit back, look at the mirror and just be like, okay, well, who am I and what do I want? You know, it's like, we're only here once, you know, some people believe in the afterlife. Some people don't. But I think what we do in this life matters. Yeah. So you just have to sit back and say, who am I? What am I here for? You know, and what can I do to make myself better today? Because tomorrow is not promised. So you need to, to 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 travel more. You need to get out more if you're able and if you can do it safely. But, you know, being cooped up, watching the news is not good for your mental health. You know, get out. Take a walk. You know. Call somebody you hadn't talked to in a long time. You know, catch up with somebody. Just anything to kind of get your mind off of everything that's going on because, you know, there is no rewind. You know, there's none of that. Once it's over, it's over. So just enjoy yourself. You know, do what you can to make yourself happy while you're here. Wow, I love that. Yeah, definitely. Guys, do what you can to make yourself happy while you're here. Get one shot at this, you know. One shot yeah, is all you got, absolutely. right? 
Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I, yeah, and I especially love the fact that you said to call somebody to catch up because we about to catch up on these cowboys. Hey. <laughs> you, you know, them boys? <laughs> on them boys back at... <laughs> Them boys are back in town. You know, I, I, I'm going to take a couple of seconds. We didn't had a, a heavy conversation, and I definitely appreciate and support um, everything that you're pouring into this project, Tim. So um, before we leave, I want you to drop your handles. But before, you know, where we can get in contact, your social media handles, website, whatever you have, so people can get in touch. But I especially want to take this minute to just rally around them cowboys real quick okay. because I got some, okay. some – I'm not going to say his name, but I got a specific listener, audience member – who uh, a Green Bay Packers fan? Which I, you know, I, you know, nothing against the Packers, but any chance well, I have to to get with a fellow Cowboys fan and just <laughs> just be a bit messy, <laughs> like be a be a little bit messy, a little bit tacky, uh, and just like rub hey, it in. We're gonna have a great season, hey, right? Hey, look, I'm gonna tell you like this. So I just went to this spot over here, and I got this brand new new era fresh off the rack hoodie just came out like two weeks ago, you know, chocolate brown with that big old blue star on the back. All right. Let and us on start. the hood, it's got cowboy rolled around it. So when you put the hood on, let me tell you something, it's, it's going to go good. <laughs> with the brown right. temp that I got, gotcha. you know, when I roll up in the stadium for oh. any, anybody that comes to AT&T stadium this year, anybody that want it, anybody that want it. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's a be, beautiful we over thing. Here in Agtown, you know, okay. so come see us. We ain't running from nobody. Come to the star in Frisco. We over here practicing every day. So, you know, as long as Dak stay healthy. You oh, know, my gosh. Young, deep, I'm hoping so. Right. We good. We, we good. good. We good. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? But as a Cowboys fan, I haven't said that in a long time because it's certain things that I've seen, you know. But now I really got a good feeling. I got a good yeah. feeling. And I don't really – good, good I don't guys. throw that out a lot. And I could be wrong. But, hey – it's America's team, so who cares? Yeah, hey, who cares? You know what? And let's not let's not do a follow up episode and be crying because we didn't make it to playoffs. We're gonna go ahead and <laughs> speak hey, into existence. I'm not Don't come on. Exactly. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be one of the ones that throw the rocks and then hide my hands. <laughs> right, y'all do not come for us. This conversation never existed if we do not make it to playoffs. I definitely need to make a call to Jerry Jones and talk to the administrative <laughs> offices about what right. we can get you done. Do Right. But we got C D Lamb, who's awesome, amazing, you know, Zeke, Zach, of course. Um, oh man, we I you know what, let me let me go ahead and end this because we'll we'll get into a conversation about <laughs> what are we talking about. Malik Hooker, oh KK. my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Brandon yeah. Gregory, let's go. Yeah. It's gonna be Keanu nice. Neal. Okay, I'm sorry. Look, that's all right. You, you know, know what? I was up you had me just I'm looking up here right now, looking at my uh my Dallas Cowboys. I got the hoodie and the cap the cap yes. and I, I got my gear out uh last weekend, so I'm I'm right in there with you. But yeah, I'm excited to see it should be a good season for everybody. I hope um all of the teams stay, you know, healthy and well and just put on, you know, some good performances. So we we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. No doubt, no doubt. Well, you know, when I'm rolling with the KWE you know, yeah. I, got re- I got to represent them Cowboys. And when I'm rolling with my girl, K Double E, all right, gonna represent. Yo, hey, Tim, we got to do a part two. We gonna we we'll we'll make a part two to this. Uh, maybe after you get the campaign roll, like maybe let let's let's try to reconnect in November, just to kind of touch base and see what things are. We want to hear more about the campaign, um, the short film project, everything that you're doing. Uh, but we'll end it here. Go ahead and drop. Let us know where we can connect with you online if anybody wants to uh, get in touch or reach out and to also support the campaign. Indeed, indeed. Well, you know, Instagram and Twitter, um, it's uh, at Mr. Underscore YBR. That's at MR Underscore YBR. Uh, Facebook, you can find me, uh, Young Billy Ross, Y-O-U-N-G-B-I-L-L-Y-R-O-S-S. So those are the three three main platforms that I'm active on. So not really active on Twitter, but you can catch me on the gram 24-7. So definitely hit me up, you know, DM me. Uh, you know, let's connect, let's network, and it's all good. All right. Remember, all it takes is one. Just one. Just one to start the fire, and it's going to blaze from here all the way to wherever. Um, Absolutely. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love you for coming on. I appreciate you as always. Good friend, Mr. YBR, Young Billy Ross, aka Timothy Williams. Tim, thanks so much for dropping in and sharing um, the Can You Can Can You Get Away campaign, and we look forward to having you back soon.
Hey, I appreciate you having me. Love you too. You take it easy. Hey, stay in touch. Yep. Will do, Tim. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.